Hello and welcome to another quick vocab review. We're going to be talking about the Great Awakening, which is found in A Push Period 2. Here's your definition. An 18th century religious movement characterized by fervent expression of religious feeling among masses of people. So one thing that's important to note about the Great Awakening is that this is going to be the first Great Awakening. There will be another second Great Awakening, which you will learn about in A Push Period 4. Um, so some significant characteristics of the first Great Awakening is that it's beginning in Europe. And then it comes to the North American British colonies um, around the 1720s through the 1740s. It will come through the migration of people and through print culture. So what are the causes of the Great Awakening? While well, sermons and religious affiliation had become known as being more dull and boring, um, the commitment to churches was more out of a sense of obligation versus um, choice. Uh, ministers became less focused on the difficult parts, um, you know, like hell and sin, uh, and were more focused on like the intellectual discourses that happen. Um, the Enlightenment, which had also been occurring at the same time in Europe, had also begun to shift attention away from the church. And so the Great Awakening is almost like a backlash to that more sci uh, science based type of thinking. So two major figures of the American Great Awakening are Jonathan Edwards and George Whitfield. So Jonathan Edwards, his most notable sermon is going to be Sinners in the Hands of an Angry God, which we'll read an excerpt from. Um, and this is really going to be a good um, clue or a good indicator of what the second or the first Great Awakening sounded like, but it's not necessarily true of all of uh, Edwards' sermons. He was focused in Massachusetts and New England. George Whitfield will actually migrate from England to the colonies. He will be um, go throughout the colonies, preaching at times to groups as large as 10,000. And he won't really be in churches. He will be more in open spaces. So here is an excerpt from Sinners in the Hands of an Angry God. Your wickedness makes you as you were heavy as lead and to tend downwards with great weight and pressure towards hell. And if God should let you go, you would immediately sink and swiftly descend in plunge into the bottomless gulf and your healthy constitution, your own care, your prudence and best contrabands and all your righteousness would have no more influence to uphold you and keep you out of hell than a spider's web would have to stop a falling rock. The God that holds you over the pit of hell, much as one holds a spider or some loathsome insect over the fire, abhors you and is dreadfully provoked. His wrath towards you burns like fire, and he looks upon you as worthy of nothing else but to be cast into the fire. He is of purer eyes than to bear to have you in his sight. You are 10,000 times more abominable in his eyes than the most hateful, venomous serpent is in ours. Oh, sinner, consider the fearful danger you're in. So you can feel the, the heaviness, the intensity, the passion in this uh, sermon. So what's the significance here? What do you need to know for the A-Push curriculum? Well, there's a significant increase in religious commitments and including new denominations and so new types of Protestant churches, such as Methodists and Baptists. People also began to study the Bible in their own homes more um, rather than just going to church and listening to the minister. And this led to more contradictions sometimes with what, with what the minister was saying and what they were reading in their own homes. Also at these revivals, segregation rules sometimes were not present. And so you could see Africans and whites mixed together. You could see women and men mixed together. All right, but here's kind of the key is that it's going to impact the colonist view of religious authorities. So they are going to begin to be more likely to criticize their religious authorities who are seen as the most important member, the most educated member of society. And if they were willing to criticize the religious authorities, that then later translates to a critical view of political authority. So I hope that this video was helpful for you. If so, please like and subscribe.